All right, welcome to another photo critique from the Digital Photo Rec group on Flickr. I'm Toby. And I'm Christina. And we're going to be rolling through a handful of images tonight. Just want to point out real quick that in the future, for future critiques, and I think actually this one, all of these images did fall into this category, uh, we're really going to be prioritizing photos with metadata. So your kind of elaborate um, composite images beautiful, nothing wrong with them, but we just don't want to spend time critiquing them here because that's really not the purpose of this group and there are plenty of other places to get critiques and feedback on images like that. I think that composites are not, they're something we can critique, but just leave some of the metadata in the image so that we can at least, you know, tell what your exposure was, what your aperture was, et cetera, et cetera. So. Well, I think that's a good point. I think there are composites that are completely fine, like an HDR image, what was your base exposure or something like that, um, or another image where two are, are overlaid together, but the ones that are almost painter-like okay. and, and haven't even begun from a photo, I think. Um, I'd rather not spend time critiquing because I think there's better places and people that are better able to give feedback than we are on those pictures. But with all that said, let's dive into our, well, let's just scroll down first. People like to see the picture as we're scrolling so many images and let's dive right into our first one. Christina, you picked this. Yeah, I just, I don't, can't really point my finger at the specific thing about this image that really stood out to me. Um, but it seems like a, a conceptual sort of image and, you know, the caption says our lives hanging like bunches of grapes. Um, and so I just like, I love the light. The light is, it looks like window light and it's falling very, very softly on this woman's face. Um, I think if there was anything that I would suggest to change about this image is to not necessarily cut off her arms unless there was a specific uh, meaningful reason for why you did this. But otherwise it's really nicely composed. Um, I think that the the soft the blurred out it foot frames the images on the sides add a really nice visual interest um and they make me wonder you know why what they were f what they're there for so um yeah i just i th i think it's an image that makes me think and makes me wonder so that's kind of what i liked about it mm -hmm. Um, remind us as uh, viewers, when, where is it appropriate to cut somebody's parts off? I don't know. Honestly, I've heard like cut and don't cut at the intersections of limbs. So like joints? Right. Don't cut at the joints. I've heard cut at the joints. Um, so honestly, mm. I, I don't know. I think do what, what's best for you. I think what looks really weird is when you cut off like a wrist or like an ankle, or like the tip of a toe, or the tip of a foot, that looks really weird and like it wasn't on purpose, unless it was, again, for some <laughs> very specific reason. But generally, I would say, as a rule of thumb, don't cut wrists off, don't cut ankles or feet off, because that looks uh, sloppy. Weird. Yeah, it, looks, it sloppy. looks weird and looks sloppy, because, yeah, I think... I, I, you know, I'm sure there's a reason for cutting somebody's toe off deliberately in some cases, but when it's just such a small amount, it looks sloppy more than anything. And this is very close to almost all of her hands here. So we're not picking specifically on this image, but using this as an example of be very careful, either be deliberate in your cropping and cutting of somebody or um, let it all be there. Great. Thank you, Federica. Mark's got this Cafe Spectators. I picked this one also, and I love so much about this image. I love the treatment. I think it looks gorgeous as a black and white image. I think that it makes the subjects of the image stand out a lot. I think if this image was in color, the subjects would kind of just blend in way too much with the background and I think you know that looks like a market of some kind in the background it's probably really colorful and yeah the colors wouldn't blend so well I love how the subjects are there's a little bit of rim light around them so they're highlighted and you know this the, the light is also highlighting the cigarette smoke and they're obviously it looks to me like they're people watching or a couple enjoy coffee and a smoke while enjoying the madness of uh Jama Elfna. So 
Yeah, and I think the composition's really great. I think they're both sort of framing the scene with their heads, and it's just a really nice, um, I don't know if peaceful is the right word, but just a really nice moment, I think, captured, kind of like street photography. I wonder if you knew these people or if they were strangers. Um, so this is another image that sort of makes me think. I like it a lot. I don't really have anything to add, except I do wish that this woman's face right here was hidden more. Um, my eyes keep coming to that face. It's just because it's an out of focus, but not out of focus enough to tell that it's a human face right there. My eyes keep getting drawn to that. And this is where I wonder if, did you fire off a couple of frames or just one? And in a couple, I wonder if she had passed through all the way, if the image would be a little bit stronger, but then maybe the smoke wouldn't be gone. So it's just something I wonder. Overall, I think it's a great image. Yeah, you know, that's a really good point, actually, the point about the face, because I think that the fact that it, it still looks like a face, and our eyes, like, we're, we're kind of hardwired, our eyes are hardwired to tr gravitate towards faces and towards eyes and towards familiar features like that. So, yeah, so watch for faces that are still recognizable that might be a distracting element in your image. Great. Thank you, Mark. All right. Mike Jal, this person. So I picked this image also, and I think I just really like the graffiti um, sort of uh, juxtaposed against the street. Um, you know, I think I would have probably cut this part off the image, would have cropped a little bit there. And actually, I may have even cropped the cars off, possibly, and just, you know, cropped in a little bit. So just cut all of this part off, and I think that would have made a much stronger image. You've got these leading lines that are, you know, guiding your eye towards the graffiti. Um, looks like the graffiti might be cut off just a little mm -hmm. bit also. Um, but I think, yeah, so just crop a little bit. Um, it looks like the settings were appropriate to get, you know, this exposure. Um, you know, ISO 100 at 1 50th of a second and 2.8 to sort of uh, blur the street out of focus. Um, so yeah, well done. I, I like this image overall. But yeah, definitely adjust your composition and your cropping. Yep, I agree. A um, little bit of extra space at the bottom and a little bit of chopped off at the top uh, that would be better. And, and yep, bring it in so we can see down the street. Gives us the sense of place, but we don't need to see the cars as well. Um, great little camera you got there, the 100D with a 40 on it. Wonderful little walk around camera, so small. Be careful, you um, 1 50th of a second without any image stabilization and you could get softer image. It looks fine, but just be careful of that. You could certainly have gone a slightly higher ISO um, and been able to increase your shutter speed. Uh, and, but in this case, it's fine. So, oh, I didn't mean to close it, but all right. We got another one, the Dark Misty Harbor from Ian. Okay, so I think this is one of the ones that I chose also. And I... The composition to me in this photo, um, it's really great in some ways and really not so great in some ways. So I think that the first thing that I would like to highlight that was done right is framing this chair. The light on this bench, I guess not a chair, it's a bench. The light on this bench is really, really great. It's perfect. It's just... It's the only, it seems like it's a subject of the image and it stands out to me as the only subject in the image. So in terms of really keeping the focus on your subject, that was well done. Through composition, and I know you didn't have control of the light, but I think that approaching, shooting the bench from this side, backlit, sort of gives a really interesting mood and it highlights the bench in a very interesting way. Um, the horizon line is a little bit crooked, so I might just crop um, and tilt it over to the left a little bit. Just so the to right straighten, needs to come up just a little bit. Yeah, to yeah. straighten the horizon line. And I don't know if I'm crazy about this tree being cut off at the top. I feel like it, it feels a little strange. I also do feel like... Um, like this tree is just kind of smack dab in the middle um, and so it makes the composition feel a little bit un unbalanced so um, maybe try to reframe this whole scene from a different slightly different angle 
that might be best. Um, but otherwise, great shot. I like the mood. I love the fog. The fog's really very cool. Um, but straighten that horizon line. You guys need to be better about your horizons. It's funny. I look at it, and I'm not convinced that the horizon is crooked. I think we got across the river, we have just a higher elevation, maybe. And in this mist, it's hard to tell. So I'm not convinced it is crooked. Okay. Um, I, I, I love the moodiness of this image. I would be curious to see. I was wondering what you were going to say was, you know, a weakness of this composition. And one of my thoughts was uh, maybe get the bench out of it, and move forward past the bench, just past it to still be, high, you know, um, shadowing the light with this tree and still have this lead, this line that curves down in a way, which I think would be really cool. I'd, I'd like to see a shot from this angle, but overall, I really like this um, image. But I could be cropped in just a little bit on the left as well because this the way this chain kind of ends up. Yeah, I agree. And I actually, I think that the, the bench as a subject is a much stronger element than the tree because um, the tree is pretty, I don't know, it's, I feel like there's a story in the empty bench, whereas there's no story within the tree. Mm -hmm. The tree's just, an, you just know. Just there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I like the bench as as the subject of the image. I think it makes it a more interesting image. Yeah. Um, but maybe, yeah, definitely cropped a little bit off this side and framed, maybe frame it yeah. a little differently altogether. And one other option, shooting, you're shooting wide, 18 millimeters, maybe back up a little bit and um, narrow your focal length uh, to try to focus your perspective a little bit further down and you would have a little bit more um, depth of field in that case, or sorry, shallower depth of field. The fog already does a good job of softening, so I'm not sure what I'm saying there, but thank you, Ian. Clownfish. And this is the last image that I chose for the review. Um, well, for one, I think the clownfish is really cute, but I just love the crispness, the quality of this image, and I think the composition is really nice. It's, um, you know, you've got some visual elements right here that add interest, and then there's the back of the aquarium that's sort of, you know, you still get a sense of space, but, um, but not so much that it's distracting from the fish. I think I might correct the color balance is probably tough in this situation, but I don't believe that the white stripes are supposed to be blue. There's a, a noticeable blue tint. It's um, probably the aquarium light. Right, but I think you can you can mm -hmm. correct for that in post processing. Um, I may like just to be really really picky. May crop a little bit this way so that the fish is a little bit more centered. Uh, horizontally on the frame but that's about it I think it's a really strong image it's a great image and I'm sure it was not easy to take because these guys move fast um, I've definitely tried to take pictures of clownfish in the past and it's it's tough because you're working with the glass of the um, aquarium and you're also working with a really fast moving subject so it looks like one hundred one four hundredth of a second it's probably the right shutter speed and you did need to open up all the way to 2.0 point, 2 it was not the widest aperture but it's pretty wide um, and looks like you were using the 50 so that gave you a nice shallow depth of field well done yep nice very nice all right so this is one of the images i picked i don't know if we need to say who picked what but it, it since Christina said that last one was the last one she picked in, you know, all the rest are mine. Um, I think this is a, uh, this has a lot of really cool elements to it, but it also illustrates some of the things that we were talking about earlier. One is the tips of this little boy's feet, or the tip of one of his foot is cut off. Um, just enough to be bothersome to me. I mean, we're pretty picky, but I think that's why you guys put your images here to hear some feedback on them. Uh, so I'd like just a little bit wider and... Um, you know, there is a moodiness to this photo, which is interesting, but then we can't see his face at all. So I have no idea if he is running in terror from this girl who could be really creepy or could be his sweet, sweet sister standing behind him, or if he's having the most best, amazing time of his life running through what looks like this kind of fountainy, um, spray 
playground area. Yeah, that is really interesting. I actually, until you mentioned it, I hadn't thought about it, but then it hit me that this is a very, like, this little girl back here is a very ominous character in this image. <laughs> and, yeah, we don't really know if he's smiling or if he's crying. Right. Um, so maybe this treatment wasn't the right treatment for this image. It just kind of makes it really scary nope. and it gives it a dark sort of mood and and for Jew 33 ju 33 um you know this is you know you capture this moment and so you probably can in your mind hear the laughter and the fun of it but but presented to somebody on the cold hard computer screen um i think you can have a, a very different feeling to it so there needs to be some way a little bit more light catching on the side of his face um just to give us a hint of his emotion um, but I think there's a lot of really neat aspects of this image as well. I picked this one because I hope somebody's watching this is really scared of spiders. That's mean. <laughs> that's a horrible, no, that's not that's why like I, a I, real I, thing. <laughs> I consider, well, it's on the screen. It's not going to hurt them. Um, th this is just a, a great image. This is made with the 100 millimeter macro, which is just an amazingly sweet, fun lens to work with. But... Um, just a really nice shot. I like how the spider is just off center. Nice catch lights in its eyes. I mean, that's catch lights are something that we often look for in human eyes, but they also work well in creature eyes. Um, and just the detail and the depth of field here is just so perfect to highlight the front of this crazy hairy spider um, and not so much Yeah, uh, this anything picture else. is pretty perfect. Yep. It's amazing. I like it. Very nice job. This is, uh, what's that then? Jean. John Christophe. Yes, I think he goes by JCB. So this is another picture that I picked and um, cute little boy, cute little cheeks. But the first thing I notice is it looks like the front of his shirt is sharper than his face. So watch your focus points, especially when you are focusing at something like uh, f2.8. So you are using the wonderful Sigma 18-35. to Beautiful, beautiful lens. Uh, you open it up nice and wide to create the shallow depth of field, but you've got what looks like a little, the spot you should be focusing, you should be using a center focus point or, well, actually, if you're using the viewfinder and the 70D focus problems right now, no. Um, use, a, you know, the top focus point, if I was going to guess here in your composition, and make sure it's focused on the eyes and snap off a couple of pictures. Also, give yourself just a little bit more room. You chopped off the top of his head, and I think that makes... Baby's got big heads already, but it does seem to make it a little bit bigger. And you might even watch my very brand new focal length perspective video and think about backing up a little bit and zooming in a little bit. So back up just enough to keep the same framing um, once you zoom to 35. Yeah, so I, I think I, what I wanted to add about this image is that maybe pick a little bit of... Um, a smaller aperture so you know a larger number um because i imagine this baby was probably also moving quite a bit That's a good point. so um either you move with the baby and try to you know nail the focus or just stop down a little bit um and uh the the other thing i wanted to comment on was just the light i thought the light on this image was really nice just falling on the face of this baby um, you know, there's really nice catch lights on the top right part of the eyes, and his expression is really sweet. So, yep. um, so I thought that was worth mentioning. That's good. I did I mention those catch lights in the spider's eyes and the same here for this little guy. Um, so, very nice. Thank you. This is one I picked from Scranton. I picked this from David here because, well, I just love the bokeh lights in the background. What were you shooting? The 518 on the Nikon. Um, you know, I actually just recently this weekend was shooting with the 518 on the Canon for the first time in a long time. And I made no images as nice as this, but I made a couple with the lights that were just so bokeh delicious in the background. Um, and this is a really nice shot. Uh, you compose this nicely with just this hint of the viewfinder, which gives you a sense of place, some kind of overlook, scenic view. Um, but the city lights in the background are all out of focus. And I like this. I don't think I have anything to add except maybe the horizon is crooked, but maybe it's just the the mountains in the background. Um, yeah, I think this is very nice. You know, if this, if uh, just thinking, if this 
has any information on it, like 25 cents or anything like that, it might be nice to bring up the shadows so that we could read a little bit of that. Um, the darkness has lost any details there, but that's getting picky. I think this is a great shot. Thank you, David. Paul submitted this 57 Chev tail light, and the colors and the reflections here are surreal almost. It almost looks painting-like. I love it. And then I see those two people in the way there, and it really bothers me, especially since that one is just kind of cut off. This is another one of those great examples of, um, you know, maybe those people stood there for five hours and you just couldn't do anything about it. But if you'd waited a minute, 30 seconds, did they wander off um, and then did give you this shot where I don't see anything behind them except other maybe another car. I don't know. It looks like it would be a perfect shot. So really, other than those two people being there, it is, to my mind, a very close to perfect shot. I saw you make a little note about keeping yourself out of the reflection. Um, I think I might see you right there, but that is tiny. You did a good job of staying out of the reflection here. Oh, maybe that's your head right there, too. I don't know, which is always a tricky thing to do. Um, but I think the exposure here is pretty spot on shooting with a, a point and shoot, a nice point and shoot. Um, and it's a it's cool. It's a cool shot. Christina nods her head yes, which doesn't translate well to audio. <laughs> All right, another shot from Greg, or not another shot, but a shot from Greg. And it says Sydney's backbone. So I'm pretty sure this is a close up shot of that iconic Sydney Opera House. I like this shot a lot. The repeating lines in here, the light, uh, just a really nice shot. Um, and, you know, this kind of illustrates some of the other examples I've talked about in my critique videos of either get in close and get the detail or get far enough back that you got a sense of place. And also with something, I mean, you know, taking a picture of the Sydney Opera House kind of begs that question of why do we take pictures of anything anywhere anymore? Because a million pictures have already occurred. Like literally a million pictures probably have been taken of the Sydney Opera House, if not more. Somebody find that number, how many, and put it down below, please. Um, and, but... I think, Greg, you've got a unique shot. I've never seen a shot like this before, and so it stands out to me, and that's what you want your images to do, to stand out. Uh, it's pretty cool, because if you just took a regular old shot of the Sydney Opera House, showed it to your coworkers, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's cool. You're in Sydney. I've seen that before. But if you show them something like this, they might be like, wow, I've never noticed that it had such a kind of cool tongue and groove roof. So thank you, Greg. Nice shot. Very cool. I was going to try to pronounce that name. I think we've probably done that before. Another cute baby. Um, looks like they're getting sleepy, uh, but really nice job with those bright blue eyes. Catch lights in the corners again of those eyes. I'm not positive. I don't know what our light source was for here. Is it a, is it an open window? Um, does that's look what like, it looks like. It looks like the baby's in a car. Yep, yep, I think so. So that's really nice lighting. I can't decide. I was thinking, I looked at this image briefly earlier as I was, I was picking them, and I can't decide if I would have liked this more as a landscape orientation um, that would have given us the whole fuzzy hood and less of the, you know, the jacket down below. Um, Christina's saying no. You like no, this image as it I is? like, I prefer portraits in portrait mode than in, it's, I think it's really, it's a lot harder to take a good portrait of somebody and, um, landscape mode because you have to cut out to make sure that the background that in the background there are no distracting elements and that it's very clean and I don't think that that would have been the case here um, I don't think that it bothers me that the little fuzzy parts of the coat are a little bit cut off I think that the eyes are still very much the focus of the image I think if I had done anything differently it would it would have been to take the binky out just to see the whole all of Camille's face. then you would have made the baby cry. Not necessarily. But her eyes are still really beautiful, and I think that's that's the best part of this image. So I think that was that's what makes this image really strong. Good. Thank you. I don't have anything to add except I think you could have gone to a wider depth of field. Uh, sorry, a wider aperture and been able to drop your ISO some. Uh, you know, at this distance, at this focal length, you could have easily gone to f5.6 uh, and um, been just fine. Maybe even 5, 4.5. All right, so thank you. Q. And Henry, Trackzilla, I think he goes by as well, um, or Trackkiller. Anyway, uh, Henry's got this 
Beach View Seagull. And I want to know, Henry, did you just get lucky? Because his eye is sharp. And that is pretty cool. 70D, fast focusing. You've got uh, F8, one five hundredth of a second. You're using P mode, so the camera's making the decisions for you. But you know what? It made the right ones. It nailed the focus on this bird's head. I like how the outer wings are um, out of focus. In the gallery, there's another bird landing in other other image. Um, and it's just, uh, it's very similar in that lots of it is out of focus, except the front of it is almost in focus, but it doesn't seem quite as sharp as this. And so I really like this. I really don't have much to, um, you know, to say could make this better, except maybe getting picky. I crop this little white dude, a uh, little white seagull out down here um, because he doesn't add anything to it. And he's just bright enough that he can catch the eye a little bit. But otherwise, uh, nice framing here. And was this cropped some? I think it was because this is, looks a little more squarish than your normal image. But yeah, Christina, do you have anything to add about this one? I don't think so. I think, well, actually, I do on second thought. I, I may have cropped this this part out because I don't think mm. it adds anything else. Um, I may have just gone in and just deleted this and that and this guy down here. And I think that would have made a very, and probably even go as far as to edit these parts out of the image. Just because this, I mean, the, the focus on the bird is, is really, really nice. So it stands out just by itself, just because of the focus, but why not like take the extra step and make this a really, really, really perfect image? Because yep. we all want to be perfectionists. Um, Maybe not everybody. <laughs> well, I was saying that sarcastically. I'm sorry that didn't, <laughs> that you didn't pick up on it. Um, but yeah, uh, try to, try, try being really nitpicky with your own images and not to beat yourself up about them, but just to edit the tiny details to make them the best that they can be. I want to hear from you all. Maybe this week's question to comment on down below is how much post-processing processing do you think is too much? And, you know, taking time to clone out little bits here and there, which Lightroom makes quite easy in Photoshop as well. Um, you know, is too much, uh, or just are you? Do you limit yourself to adjusting maybe exposure slightly and contrast and things like that? So that's all of the images that we're going to critique tonight. There are lots more in here. I'm going to be doing some traveling over the next couple of days, so I may not get back in this week, but I did last week and I had a great time. Um, just myself, Christina was off someplace um, reviewing images and I hope you all got something out of that. So watch that if you haven't already. Thanks everyone who is submitting. Keep on submitting. We will keep on critiquing. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.